Hey, this is Frank of the Ocho Verde Wildlife Channel. Uh, welcome back. Um, this morning, we are going uh, from Golfito over to the Osa Peninsula. Uh, they have uh, found a black-headed bushmaster, which is a um, very rare snake, as you may know. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a trail camera on it and hopefully try to understand what happens uh, during the day and during the night with these snakes. They're supposed to be fairly sedimentary. Um, there's a possibility that this is a gravid female, which means she may not be moving around too much. Uh, but we're hoping to learn exactly what's happening with these snakes. We will see what happens. I'm going with uh, Marcelo and uh, Guido. I'm not sure who else is going, um, but Guido is on the way and we will be heading to the Osa Peninsula, probably about two, two and a half hour trip uh, to see a black-headed Bushmaster that they found last week and we're hoping it's still gonna be in the same location. So we headed over to the Osa Peninsula. I rode with Guido and Eric and we met up with Marcelo and Rinaldo near the trail. This Bushmaster had been found a week earlier by some individuals who were monitoring the endangered white-lipped peccary, a favorite food of the Osa's remaining jaguars. We hiked 45 minutes into the deep forest, keeping an eye out for perhaps another Bushmaster and seeing plenty of signs of peccaries along the way. Peccaries have been known to feed on venomous snakes, so there was some concern for the snake's safety. Bushmasters spend a good bit of time below ground in rodent burrows, and we hope that it had not gone under since it was last seen. When we arrived near the previous location, the snake was indeed gone. Our hearts sank a little bit. However, after about 10 minutes of intense searching, Guido and Marcelo hollered out that they had found her. Did you find it? Yeah. Yeah, I found it, but I was like, a, when I was, like a, where Frank is right now. That's where you saw it? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say, like from here you don't see it, right? It's really hard to see in the camera too, you know? And what a beauty she was. When this snake was originally found, word spread fast, and Marcello was the first herpetologist to arrive. He weighed it, determined the sex, and measured her length for their records. Uh, a meter 25, yeah. 25. Yeah. That's that small? Well, the, big, the biggest one we've ever caught was two meters, one centimeter. We each took turns taking pictures of this extremely rare creature. Her cryptic coloration was incredible, and she matched the fallen leaves perfectly. She was coiled, just resting, showing no signs of life, not even a tongue flick. I pulled out my trail camera and tripod. Then Eric and Guido went about positioning it on a nearby tree. Uh, what we did last time is that we set it on uh, to take pictures. What was it, every 15 minutes? Every 15 that? minutes. I think you should go closer. Like five. Is that a pretty good view there, Guido? Yeah, maybe even up a little bit. Up a little bit. And uh, up there. So 
masterpiece. A masterpiece. Yeah. Thank you, Gil. Yeah, that's looking like a really good setup, Gil. The camera was set to take an image every five minutes. This would assure that we could get a good reading on her activity. All right, goodbye, Snake. We'll see you on the cameras, maybe. <laughs> Even though we left the Bushmaster at 11 a.m., the camera did not start taking images until 3 p.m. The snake was stationary until around 3.30. Then it made a crawl to the left, but came back into the original position by 340. It caught the last rays of the bright sun until four o'clock. It seemed alerted around 5.30 with a head lift and a few looks around. Around 6.15, it made a short move to the left, still very alert, head raised and active. At 7.35, it had stretched up a hill, and by 7.40, it had crawled away. Here's a look at the sequence with no stops. Note the glowing eye shine from the camera's infrared flash. So why all this attention for a large venomous snake? Historically, black-headed Bushmasters have had a very small range. And that range is shrinking due to human encroachment and habitat loss from agricultural expansion. So they are extremely rare and endangered. It is believed they only survive in extreme southern Costa Rica and possibly the northwest border area of Panama. As a large, somewhat sedentary snake, it's an easy target for illegal hunters, loggers, and gold miners. But there's a grassroots coalition out there to help Bushmasters. This group is spearheaded by Guido and Marcelo and other longtime naturalists and guides on the Oza Peninsula. Word has gotten out to be on the lookout for black-headed Bushmasters. Research in herpetology microtourism far outweigh the potential random killing of these rare animals. Now, any Bushmaster sightings find their way to Marcelo and Guido for potential follow-up visits and important data collection. Bushmaster sightings can be reported on the Facebook page of Snake Identification of Costa Rica, which is monitored by snake conservationists. In the rare event that the snake happens to be in a dangerous situation, Please call the fire department. They are trained at the removal of venomous snakes. If you'd like to help more, Stephen Spear and an organization called The Wilds 
provide some funding for wild Bushmaster research in southern Costa Rica. Radio tagged and camera trap Bushmasters, underground exploratory cameras, and a Bushmaster sniffing dog are a few of their past research projects. I'll include the contact information in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to, as this helps our conservation efforts here in the jungle. You beautiful beast.